Hello everyone. Mark recounts two healing stories in today's gospel. The first story is about a man named Jairus and the other is about unnamed sick woman. Actually, one story comes in the middle of the other. The gospel text opens with Jesus by the seaside and a large crowd are around him. Note that much of Jesus ministry and most of his miracles took place around the sea of Galilee with most people following him largely because of his miracles. Friends, while Jesus was with the people, Jairus came to Jesus. This man was one of the leaders of the local synagogue. It could very well be the synagogue in Capernaum. Describing the same set of events, Matthew in chapter 9 and Luke in chapter 8 mention that Jesus had returned to Capernaum, the town believed to have been Jesus' home and the center of his ministry after leaving Nazareth. Friends, a synagogue is a place of worship and study of the scriptures for the Jews. This is not the same as the holy temple where sacrifices are made. During the time of Jesus, there were synagogues all over Israel. Jewish people still meet and worship in synagogues today. As the leader of the synagogue, Jairus would have been a well-respected man of the community with the responsibilities for the temporal affairs of the synagogue and worship. He would have been accustomed to people falling to their knees before him to plead their cases. Besides, the Jewish authorities were violently opposed to Jesus and to be seen with him could have been disastrous for Jairus. Friends, but now putting aside his prejudices, dignity, pride and fear, and in utter desperation Jairus came to Jesus and fell at his feet and pleaded with him to come to his house because his daughter was seriously ill and at the point of death. Friends, Jairus was helpless but not hopeless. His hope and trust was in the Lord Jesus. He believed that Jesus could heal her. Friends, touched by Jairus' humble and urgent plea, Jesus proceeded to make his way to Jairus' house. But little did he know, as he and Jesus pushed their way through the crowd, that there was a woman in the crowd who needed Jesus just as much as he did, and that she was also pushing through the crowd. She, unlike Jairus, was an unimportant, nameless, weak and poor woman. She had been suffering hemorrhages, that is, bleeding, or the abnormal flow of blood from a damaged blood vessel. Friends, here it is interesting to note this parallel. The dying girl was 12 years old and the woman had been sick for 12 years. Friends, the number 12 is mentioned 187 times in the Bible. For instance, the book of Genesis in the Old Testament states there were 12 sons of Jacob and those 12 sons formed the 12 tribes of Israel. The New Testament tells us that Jesus had 12 apostles. The book of Revelation says that the kingdom of God has 12 gates and each gate is guarded by 12 angels. Friends, the number 12 is used in many other contexts and there are many significance tied to it. In most cases, it is thought to represent wholeness and the completion of God's purpose or God's power and authority. Friends, the word blood appears over 350 times in the Bible. Often the word is used as a means of signifying violence or death, but in other places it speaks of life and atonement. The first time the word is mentioned in Genesis chapter 4 when God Responding to Cain's evasion after killing his brother Abel, says that he can hear the voice of Abel's blood crying out to him. In the book of Exodus, God instructed the people of Israel to put blood on their doorposts in order for the angel of death to pass over their homes and to spare the lives of their firstborn sons. Friends, he also commanded the people to sacrifice animals to escape the punishment of sin which ultimately is death in the Old Covenant. And in the New Covenant, Jesus is the worthy Lamb whose blood washed away the sin of God's people so that we may not perish but have everlasting life. In all these and many other cases, 
blood refers to life like qualities friends now according to mark after the woman had spent all her money on physicians and no one was able to heal her she realized jesus was her only hope for healing so when she heard about jesus she sought him but she did not approach him as boldly as jairus did instead she slipped through the crowd surrounding jesus and on the belief that she would be healed just by touching his clothes she acted as she did friends some might wonder why she did not approach jesus to ask for his help obviously and foremost she had the deep conviction that jesus could hear her Secondly, she did not want to be noticed and for good reasons. According to the Jewish law, this woman's bleeding condition meant she was ceremonially unclean and an outcast, considered unfit to enter the synagogue, probably the same synagogue where Jairus was a leader, and forbidden to have any kind of physical contact with people. If she did, anyone she touched became unclean as well. and would be required to go through an elaborate purification process before being allowed to re-enter the synagogue friends as soon as the woman touched jesus her bleeding stopped and she knew she was cured and jesus also knew what had happened he felt that healing power had gone out from him he could have just let her touch him and quietly keep moving to onwards but for he would have known who had touched him but he didn't he publicly put her on the spot even more by insisting he be be told who had done it so that not only the healing which had taken place in secret would be made public and others may have faith through this woman's witnessing but also the woman could receive the full benefit of her healing her condition would certainly have caused not just severe physical pain but also great social emotional and psychological pain for 12 years because of isolation loneliness hopelessness despair shame and fear the healing therefore involved the need for forgiveness and restoration of the relationship with the community moreover according to the purity laws of the old testament she had to show evidence of her healing so she could be restored to all the purity and cleanness she had before friends when the woman realized that she could not remain hidden she knelt trembling before him and acknowledged what she did but jesus praising her faith addressed her as his daughter and then said to her go in peace friends this is the only time in the scriptures that jesus calls someone daughter in calling her daughter he welcomed her back into community as a member of god's family and in wishing her peace jesus restored her to perfect health of body mind and soul friends while jesus was still speaking to the woman mark writes the bad news arrived from jairus household that his daughter had already died and there was no need for jesus to come but bris regarding the message jesus said to jairus not to be afraid and just have faith friends jairus was relieved and they continued the journey to his house accompanied by a large crowd of people when they arrived at the house jesus took only peter james and john the three disciples who would be with him later at his transfiguration and during his anguish in the garden of gethsemane prior to his arrest and crucifixion Upon arriving at Jairus' home, Jesus found a gathering of people already wailing and moaning loudly. He said to them that the child is not dead but merely asleep. Friends, Jesus used the same word in connection with the death and the resurrection of Lazarus. The Bible often uses the word sleep to refer to those who are dead. And so here, Jesus has spoken of death as his sleep. from which he will awaken the sleeper friends jesus then sent the people outside went into the house with the child's parents and the disciples took hold of the girl's hand and said child get up immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around 
and he directed them to give her some food. It shows that the girl was not only raised from the dead but also restored to perfect health. Friends, what is the message for us? At some time in our lives, we all could find ourselves in overwhelming situations that we do not know how to deal with it. It might be a personal illness or life-threatening illness of a family member or unexpected death of a loved one or a case of serious depression. Just as the saying goes, desperate times call for desperate measures. Hence, desperate situations call for desperate faith. Friends, faith in itself is meaningless, but faith in the all-powerful God means everything. Friends, our Lord Jesus has demonstrated His power over evil spirits by casting out demons from the people that are possessed, over natural elements by calming the waves and the wind during a violent storm, over bodily illnesses and diseases and death. He does the same for us if we truly seek Him, even in the most desperate times. He enters into our lives in our hopeless moments and brings us hope. He comes with His healing power when no healing is possible. Friends, faith is also believing that God will do what is right at the right time. Sometimes He works the miracle of physical healing. Sometimes He brings the spiritual healing. He may not always come when we want Him to come, and He might not always answer prayers the way we want Him to. But we must always be faithful and be patient, and know and believe that He will help us. Sometimes He does what is right by not doing anything right away, or by doing something other than what we want Him to do. Friends, in times of desperation, unlike Jairus and the woman, we have our Lord Jesus, who does not ignore our plights, nor turn away from us, but who wants to hear from us and heal or save us or meet our needs. Hence, we do not have to be afraid. We just have to keep faith in Him. At the same time, let us approach Him in humility and truthfulness, for He resists the proud but shows favor to the humbly. Let us put aside all prejudices, embarrassment, social status in life or society or family in order to receive the help we so desperately need from Him. Just as the Apostle Paul says, Let us have hope and be cheerful, be patient in trials and pray constantly. Amen. God bless you.